What's up guys, it's Robin and welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are ready for a major cuteness overload because today I'm gonna to be making Elmo, the cutest little monster on Sesame Street in cake form. And I'm also gonna be making these adorable little matching twin smash cakes. So starting with our largest cake first, I am leveling out three eight inch layers of chocolate cake. Now we're just gonna take those cake scraps and set them off to the side and you can save those and freeze them. They do freeze really well and they work great for cake pops or you can save them for a snack too. Now we're just taking a little bit of buttercream and putting that on our cake board to secure that first layer of cake. And then we are spreading on a nice thick even layer of chocolate buttercream in between each of our layers of cake. So as you guys can see, I am just dolloping that icing on there and I'm smoothing it out using a small offset spatula. But if you guys want a nice thick even coat that's easy to even out, I do recommend filling up a piping bag and using that to apply your icing. Then you only have to give it a quick once over with your smoother, so it is a bit of a time saver as well. But American buttercream is pretty rich, so personally I only like to put a thin layer in between each of my cake layers, but that's just me. All right, moving on to the crumb coat. Now, if there's one thing about chocolate cake, and this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, I'm sure many of you can relate, and that is chocolate cake crumbs. When you try to do a layer of icing, those crumbs love to pick up and pull through, so you end up seeing them through your icing. So when it's chocolate cake, more often than not, I use a piping bag to apply that first layer because it gives you a really good base to start with and you don't have to push that icing around on the cake so much. So there's much less chance those crumbs are going to pick up and pull through and show up on the outside of your cake. All right, so once you finish piping your icing on, as you can see, I started by smoothing out my top first. Now the reasoning for that is because if you do the top first and then you go to the sides, you're left with that nice little lip at the very top and you can take care of that in one of two ways. One being, if this is your final coat of icing, being not your crumb coat, you can pop your cake into the fridge or the freezer for a few minutes to firm that icing up really well and then you can take a paring knife to cut that little lip off and give you a super sharp edge. And the second option being, while your buttercream is still soft, you just take your smoother of choice and you take gentle strokes inward to just kind of clean that little lip off there. And you're gonna wanna clean your scraper off between every stroke because otherwise you're just gonna end up putting more icing back onto your cake and messing up your smooth finish. But as I said, this is just a crumb coat, so this one doesn't have to be perfect. So now that we're finished, we're just gonna clean up the edge and get this one off into the fridge to firm up. And now we're gonna start working on our smash cakes. So as you guys can see, I have two four inch chocolate cakes and I've just torted those into two separate layers. But we're not gonna level those, we're gonna leave those domed to give his head a bit of a round shape on each one. And next, as you can see, I've added my two four inch cake layers to two six inch cake boards using a little bit of buttercream to act as glue. And now I'm putting a nice layer of buttercream in between each layer of cake. But because these cakes are so small, we're only doing two layers of cake with one layer of icing in between. And now we're just gonna get those final layers of cake into place and clean up that chocolate icing around the outside. And then we can start our crumb coats. So like we did with our eight inch, we're using a piping bag to apply our first layer of icing with. Then we're taking a small offset spatula to just sort of spread everything around and fill in all the empty spaces. Now, because these are four inches, they are a little bit difficult to frost, so I do find it helps to use this up and down motion to spread that icing out. It keeps your cake from sliding around quite so much. All right, now that we have our icing all spread out, I wanna smooth it out a little bit and sort of thin it out a little bit too. So I'm using a small flexible plastic smoother to give us a nice, even smooth finish but it doesn't have to be perfect because this is just our base layer. We are gonna be piping on some buttercream fur. And to finish up, we're just going to clean up the edge of our cake board. Then we're gonna switch over, repeat all those same steps with our second smash cake and get those off into the fridge while we start decorating our eight inch. So as you can see, I have a full piping bag in my hand once again. 
and I'm using an Atco number 133 piping tip and this is the grass piping tip. Now the one I have is actually relatively small and this is quite a large cake so this is going to take quite some time. I do highly recommend buying a larger grass piping tip if you want this to go much quicker and smoother. <laughs> Also, when you're piping a cake like this, it can be quite hard on the hand. So another little tip I like to share is do not overfill your bag. I know it sucks refilling your bag because it's messy and especially when you're using bright colors, you can get food color everywhere. But I do highly recommend using a smaller filled piping bag to help prevent hand cramping. It's just so much easier to squeeze the bag when it's small and it's gonna help make that eight inch cake a little less of a pain in the derriere. Whereas, look at these little four inchers. They are so much fun and they work up so quick. It's almost therapeutic. All right, now that our cakes are fully frosted, I have them chilling in the fridge once again, and now it is time to give our Elmo some faces. So starting with the largest one first, I've created a stencil, and I have just marked that off onto a piece of white fondant, which I rolled out to about an eighth of an inch thin. Now my white fondant was a little bit sticky, so I added a little bit of Tylose powder to it. Now what that did is dry it out ever so slightly, making it a little bit easier to handle and work with. And it's also gonna help it dry out and set a little bit faster as well. So next I've rolled out a piece of black fondant and I've marked off my stencil so I can see where everything has to go. Then I've taken my eyeballs and I've put them into place and using that same piece of black fondant I have rolled out, I'm going to cut out two pupils for each of his eyes. And if you have any tiny little circle cutters, this is where those would come in handy. it will be a lot quicker. All right, now once we finish cutting out the second pupil and sticking that into place, we're gonna cut out all around the outside of our pattern. And that's gonna show the outline of his face. Now all we have to do is roll out a little piece of orange fondant, cut out a little oval shape, and get that stuck into place, giving him the cutest little orange nose. Look at that, guys. Doesn't it look so good? I just love it. All right, now all he needs is a mouth. So we're gonna roll out another little piece of black fondant and using our stencil, we're gonna get that pattern marked off into place. And then we're gonna get it cut out using our X-Acto knife. But use a little bit of caution around the corners of his mouth. His little smile lines are a little bit hard to cut out. So you're gonna to wanna to be extra careful while cutting those parts so that they don't fall off. Besides those little bits, the rest of the face was so super easy. And you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna make two more smaller versions of this exact pattern for our tiny smash cakes. Now, once we have finished with all three of our faces, we're gonna take all of our cakes out of the fridge and we're gonna get those faces into place. Now, as you can see, I've already done my two little smash cakes and now it's on to the bigger cake. Well, guys, what do you think? Is this not the sweetest idea for a twin birthday party? I thought it was so sweet and brought back so many fond memories of watching Sesame Street as a child. Well, I really hope you guys liked the cakes and I hope you enjoyed the video too. And if you did, you know what to do. Hit that big thumbs up and leave me lots of love in the comment section too. And if you haven't done so already and you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you receive a notification every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching guys. See you in the next one.